party started. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome to yoga. This is, class is formerly known as Tuesday Turn Up, where we used to play this, uh, we would pick a theme and we'd have a playlist to the theme. And so tonight we're just kind of getting back into the groove of a lot of us have taken a little yoga hiatus. So this is going to be an all levels class. I'll have a little bit of heat and power for you guys and then a cool down at the end. So remember to go at your own pace. If you want to come to Child's Pose or Shavasana at any time, that's always there for you. No judgment. Just make sure you're listening to your body. And uh, try to have some fun tonight. Because this isn't, uh, we're not we're not graded on anything. There's no judgment. There's no testing. I just want y'all to have fun and, and get in touch with what's going on in the body. So let's begin our class in Child's Pose. The wider your knees, the more you're going to feel this in your hips. The more narrow the knees, you can actually get some benefits of um, some digestion help with the knees, bring some compression into the abdomen. So then this is your time to sync up your breathing. Set your intention with your breath. Allow those inhales to come in really nice and deep through the nose. And long, controlled exhales. moments for gratitude, expressing some thankfulness for this moment, this afternoon, the beautiful weather that we've got, the wonderful community of yogis that we've all got here supporting each other. Let's do one more deep breath in. And then as you exhale, you're going to take your hands to the right side of your mat. Take the left hand on top of the right hand and bring your right ear onto your right shoulder. right hand into the mat, unwind, take the left arm up, drop it over to the right hip, look over the left shoulder through your bind. See if you can spin that hand towards the inside of the right hip. And let it go, coming back to your tabletop. Take the hips side to side. Tuck the toes, lift up for downward facing dog. Pressing your heels towards the mat, looking towards your toes. 
Letting fingers spread wide and pressing into the fingertips. Bend the knees. And lift up onto your tiptoes as you breathe in. Sink the heels down as you breathe out. One more breath in, lift up the tiptoes. Breath out, sink the heels down. Walk your hands towards your feet, coming towards the back of your mat into our first forward fold. Take a big breath and lift up halfway, squeezing shoulder blades. Good, exhale, fold, grab elbows for ragdoll pose. Let the head hang heavy, shaking it, yes. Soft knees, sway side to side, the elbows. Release the elbows. Take your time rounding through your spine to come into extended mountain. Big breath in as you reach the arms up overhead, looking up. Exhale, pull hands to heart center. Eyes may close for a full round of breath together. In through the nose, out through the nose. Next inhale, you're going to lift up. Exhale, bend over to your right side. That left side of the body stretch, reach left fingertips over further, and then take it to the other side, reaching right fingertips over. Good. Back to the center. Bend the knees, fold forward as you exhale, nice and slow, going down. Breath in, lift up halfway, squeezing the shoulder blades. Breath out, you're gonna fold again. Inhale, back up to mountain, nice and slow. And pour it all forward. This time walking the hands forward, going to your downward facing dog. Taking a couple breaths to settle into that downward facing dog. Seeing where your heels want to go. If you need to bend the knees to get the heels lower, that is a nice option for you. Check in with your feet. Make sure they're not too wide on your mat. They're about hip width distance. Good, fingers spread wide, pressing into the fingers fingertips. And then you're going to look forward to the top of your mat and step towards the top of your mat. Coming into another forward fold and a big breath in brings you up halfway. Breath out, fold. Inhale, up to mountain. We're going to do a couple more of these sun salutation A's. As you breathe out, fold forward. Breathe in, flat back. Your entire exhale is your chaturanga. That's your high plank to low plank as you breathe out. You can drop to belly or knees if you need to. Breath in brings you into your upward facing dog. Pull your shoulders away from your ears. And now tuck the toes. Send the hips back down. I'm repeating over here. Downward facing dog. <laughs> Beautiful guys. Hips lifted high. Tailbone pressing back. One more breath together in. Let it go as you look forward and step forward. Coming into another fold. The breath in brings you up halfway. Breath out, fold. Inhale, mountain. Good, exhale, forward, fold. Flat back. Chaturanga, use that entire exhale to go from high plank to low plank. Good, and then your inhale takes you into your upward facing dog, really pressing into the mat, pulling the chest up and forward, and then go back, downward facing dog. Remember at any time tonight, you can go at your own pace. If you want to skip the chaturanga and step right into your downward facing dog, that is a great option. Or you can add on taking a second chaturanga in between each posture. All right, we got one more sun cell. You're gonna look forward and step forward. Flat back, squeeze those shoulders. Hold. Mountain. All the way up. When you get up, engage the glutes, the core, and then fold everything forward. Soft knees. Flat back. Chaturanga. Remember, your option is to skip that and simply step to downward facing dog. Going at your own pace, connecting with your breath. Good. Downward facing dog. Together, inhale. Exhale, you're going to look forward and either step or hop forward. Flat back. Breathe it out and fold. Breathe in, come up to chair pose, Utkatasana. Pressing the feet into the mat, specifically the heels. See if you can lift your toes. Reach the hands high, press the shoulders down. 
and then pour it forward, coming into your fold. Flat back, chaturanga. Nice control, going all the way down. Good, up dog, down dog. Another breath. On your next inhale, float that right foot into the air, slow and controlled. And then with just as much control, pull it forward coming into warrior one. Giving some space between the feet, squaring that left hip to the front, reaching the arms up. Good. Press the feet down into the mat as you lift the hands high, and then come all the way back down to your mat, either stepping to down dog or flowing through your chaturanga. You get to choose what your body wants to do this evening. All right, guys, let's float that left foot into the air. Core engages as you float the foot up in between the hands, setting up for warrior one. Taking your time to check in with the feet. Square that right hip forward. Reach the arms up. Press shoulders down. Good, nice bend in the left knee. Straightness in the right leg. Energy from the right hip to the right heel. And then take it all the way down to your mat. You get to choose how you do that. Strong, steady chaturangas, or a really focused downward facing dog. Look forward, step or hop forward. Really flat back, squeeze those shoulders tight. Soften and fold. Strong, coming into your chair pose. Press the feet, lift the hands. Good, keep the knees close. Feet hip width distance apart. Good, and fold. Flat back, chaturanga or down dog. Beautiful control tonight. Good. So for the next two sets of warriors, you have the choice to lift that foot again if that felt good for you, bringing it up and forward, or you can just step into your warrior one, you choose. Set up for warrior one, however you want to. And when you get there, take your time coming into the fullness of the pose. Where can you deepen? Where do you need to soften? Do you want to change by taking your gaze up or looking straight ahead? And then flow all the way back down to your mat, however you need to. Good. Left side, warrior one. Again, you get to choose. How do you want to get there? How do you want to set up? Where do you want to deepen? Good, nice feet placement, y'all. Take it all the way down to your mat. We've got one more sun salutation. We are warm up for our flow. We're gonna see if we can change it up just a little bit. So let's. Do one chair pose, looking forward, hopping forward, flat back, fold right into that chair. Come up. Just here for your breath. And then on the exhale, you fold it forward, flat back, down to your mats, how you want to, chaturanga or downward facing dog. Being very intentional with each posture you take. Warrior one, right side. Set yourself up for a strong warrior one. Then we're gonna go into humble warrior. So you're gonna interlace the fingers behind the back, pull the shoulders together and bow forward. Let that head hang heavy. Press into both of your feet. Strong core as you come back up through warrior one. Take your time lifting up. And take it all the way down to your mat again. Remember the breath. Try to connect each movement with a breath in or a breath out. And allow that breath to fuel your practice. All right, warrior one left side. This is bringing you up on an inhale, settling in on the exhale. 
and then setting up for humble warrior. Taking your time getting there, maybe looking up first and then letting it all fall down to the mat. Try to reach your fingertips up towards the ceiling. Yes, exactly. Really engage the core as you come back through warrior one. Reaching up, coming to the fullness of the pose and then taking it down to your mat. our warm up so I want to give you guys an option to take a child's pose just to kind of use this time to integrate the work that we've done so far to come back to a place of focused breathing to see how the muscles are doing how the body is feeling maybe you're experiencing fatigue maybe you're experiencing the sensation of power like oh my gosh my body is doing these amazing things what else can I do tonight Whatever you're feeling right now in this moment, just connect it with a big breath in through the nose. Try to seal the teeth and lips as you breathe out through the nose. See where you can soften here, letting the arms just rest on the mat, keeping this pass in place. Feeling the seat press back towards the heels. And then begin to activate in this child's pose. Reach the arms forward, let the elbows lift. Maybe look forward even, feeling that neck kind of be elongate. And then we'll come back to downward facing dog. And when you get there, I want you to take your own movements, either hips side to side or knees bending back and forth, you choose. Maybe cuddling the feet out. Whatever feels good in your body in this moment. Walk your hands back to your feet, coming to the back of your mat. Flat back as you breathe in, squeezing shoulders. Hold forward, exhale. Inhale, mountain. Nice and slow, engage glutes, engage core, bring hands to heart center. And then drop the seat coming into chair pose, Lutkatasana. Pressing that seat down, big breath in. Exhale, twist to your right. Taking left elbow to right knee, looking over that right shoulder. Your option here is to extend your arms wide, reaching left fingertips towards the ground, right fingertips towards the sky. Good. Back up to center chair. Twisted to the left. Same option. Grow those wings if you want to. Spread them wide, reaching from ceiling to floor. Good, strong knees, everyone. Strong feet. Pull it back to the center, come all the way up to your mountain, and then pour it forward into the fold. Big toe pose, peace fingers under those big toes. Really use your arm strength to pull the upper body down. Let your head hang heavy, let your knees be soft. The more you engage those arm muscles, the more you can pull your elbows out to the side and really deepen this stretch. Think about folding in half like a quesadilla. Release the toes, take your time coming all the way back up to mountain, nice and slow, rounding through that spine, reaching up and forward, hold. Breath in, flat back. Breath out for the chaturanga or downward facing dog, you choose. Good, everyone going at their own pace, checking in with your muscles. Beautiful work, yogis. Bring that right foot into the air, and sweep it forward, setting up for a crescent lunge. Really press the left toes into the mat, engage the core as you float the hands up towards the ceiling. Deepen your lunge. We're gonna do an open arm twist to the right, so that right arm swings down, and behind you, left arm in front, you're gonna look over to see your right fingertips. Try to keep your thumbs up towards the ceiling and really spread the fingers wide. Active hands, good, active core. Pull it back up to center crescent lunge, and we'll open into our warrior two. Heels now go into one straight line, right knee pointed forward, right toes forward, left toes over the balcony. Looking over that right middle finger, reaching forward, and reverse. Reach to the back of the patio, and then cartwheel the arms all the way down to your mat, downward facing dog. Now is your chance to add on a chaturanga for a little more power, a little more fire. All right, left foot floats into the air. It pulls forward, crescent lunge. Really engage the core, press the right toes into the mat. 
deep in the lunge. Open arm twist. Left hand swings down and around. Completely turn your torso over to the balcony. Beautiful. Reach your fingertips like you're trying to touch the front and the back of the patio. Good. Crescent lunge, upper center. Strong core. Open up warrior two. Now facing our doors, looking over that left middle finger. Good. Really strong feet. Pressing into that right, outside of the right foot. Yes. Reverse. Keep that left knee bent, sending that left knee forward, reaching the left hand back, and then all the way down to your mat. Downward dog or chaturanga. Nice control in that section, you guys. That was really good. Right foot floats into the air, and then floats forward, warrior two. Press the shoulders down while actively reaching fingers forward and back. Extended side angle, right elbow to the right knee, left hand towards the sky. You can look up towards your left hand or straight over the balcony into that beautiful Montgomery Plaza. And then I want you to straighten the right knee without locking it, setting up for triangle pose. So now you're reaching the left hand up, try to look at that left hand. Back into warrior two, that right knee bends. Down to the mat, downward facing dog, chaturanga. Check in with your breath. See what your body is needing right now. And then float that left foot into the air. Warrior two. Good. Really pressing both feet firmly into your mat. Extended side angle. Choose your gaze. Be very intentional about your drishti, where you're looking. Either straight out or straight up. And then we open into that strong triangle. Feel those hips press back. Left knee straightens without locking. Reaching the right fingertips up towards the beautiful blue ceiling. And back to warrior two. Hold it strong for just a breath. And then come down to your mat. Your one right side. So now hips square to the front of the room. I tricked you. Uh, yeah. Warrior two first. We usually do warrior one first. Okay, so from here we're going into our pyramid. So you're going to straighten that right knee and fold forward, hinging at the hips. If you need to shorten your stance, you may do so. Make sure both feet are grounded so that left foot is pressing down. Good. And then hips are square. Beautiful, guys. All right, twisting pyramid. So that right hand swings out and up, or you can take the right palm and gently press onto that right hip, keeping the hips level. Good, you guys, downward facing dog. Or your one left side. When you set yourself up in warrior one with the hips square to the front, when you fold into that pyramid, they, you want to keep them straight ahead. So go ahead and straighten that left knee, keep the hips where they are, and just hinge at your hips as you fold into pyramid pose. You may have to hop that back foot up slightly so that both feet can press into the mat. This is a grounding pose. You want to be pressing your feet into the ground like you're trying to imprint your footprint in your mat. And take it for the twist. Don't let those hips come out. If it helps you to take the palm to that hip to just gently press, do that. Beautiful. Downward facing dog. Everyone moving very gracefully. Love to see that. All right. Look forward. Step or hop forward. Flat back as you breathe in. Fold as you breathe out. Mountain. Come all the way up. Reach up, engage glutes, engage core, bring your hands to heart center, close your eyes. Take a moment for stillness and breath. Notice your feet connecting with the earth. Let your knees be soft. Engage thighs and glutes, engage core. Feel the shoulders press away from the ears, the crown of the head lift up. Relax the jaw. Keep your eyes closed or open them. Lift your right.
right foot up for a tree pose. Set that right foot up sturdy on your left leg. Then extend your arms out. Take your gaze up. Good. Lots of strength, lots of balancing. And set it down. Left side. Try something different with the hands. Maybe arms behind your back or arms straight out. Or keep hands at heart center and really press them into the center of your body. You choose. Try something different with your gaze. Straight out, straight up, or for a real challenge, close the eyes. Yeah. Good, you guys. Set it down. Take a wide stance on your mat. Take your hips side to side. And then circle the hips around. And the other way. position so that they're right under the hips and then you can keep your hands on your hips if that feels good lift that right foot up keep the right foot flexed you're going to open it up to the right side so we just kind of massage our hips this is starting to get into some of those hip openers and then bring it back to the center we're going to go to warrior three so the arms come forward the foot goes back flex that right foot so your toes are pointed down and then pull your arms back going into airplane. Palms face the earth. Energy in the fingertips. Good, strong focus, you guys. Come all the way up to mountain. Beautiful, let's do it all on the left side. Here we go, left foot comes up. Keep it flexed, keep it steady. Keep those hips level, and then open up that left hip as you open up the right foot. Good. Back to the center. Warrior three. Find your drishi, that's your focus. Where are you looking? Forward, down and out, you choose. And then pull the hands back, airplane. Energy in the palms, energy in the fingers. Strong core. You've got this mountain. Beautiful, guys. <laughs> Eagle, right side, right arm comes under. Right leg goes over. See if you can wrap the top of your right foot around that left calf. If not, you can always use it as a kickstand. That's a nice go-to. If you take the kickstand, press the right toes into your mat to drive the legs together. Like you're this washcloth, bringing everything out. All those drinks we had downstairs, bring it out. Squeeze tight, soft face, and a big release as you come down and up. Here we go, left side, left arm under, left leg over. Same thing, choose your foot placement very intentionally. Try to lift your elbows away from the chest so that they're in line with the shoulders. Really squeeze arms together. Get the last of that wash rack wrung out. Squeeze a little bit tighter and then open up. Mountain. Beautiful work, you guys. Forward fold. Flat back. Chaturanga. This time all going high plank, low plank, and then drop into your bellies for crocodile pose. Let your hands make this little pillow. You can rest your cheek or your forehead. <laughs> Take a moment to close the eyes, just to connect in with your breathing. Just like we took that child's pose after sun cells. Mm -hmm. <laughs> crocodile relaxing in the sun. They got a little webbies back here. Then, like, I'm wondering if if you have a cheek, so switch your cheek to the other side. I think like this, they're just really small. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to work on our locust tonight. So I want you to bring your hands by your side, like we did an airplane. Your palms face down. And then you're going to lift your chest, lift your arms, and lift your feet. Try looking down instead of looking out so that you're not straining your neck. So the crown of your head all the way to the tips of your toes is long and reaching. Yes, perfect, you guys, lower down. All right, so this time I want to set you guys up like we did in Warrior Three to airplane, so the arms are forward. So you see arms forward. Palms stay down the entire time. So you're going to lift to your locust with your arms in front of you. And you're going to bend your elbows, really engaging shoulders, and then pull the hands back, setting it into locust. Yes, just like that. Getting all that shoulder activation. 
and release down. I want to give y'all one more opportunity to try that again with arms out in front. You know the sensation, you know where you want your body and your muscles to go. So go ahead and lift up. Nice, strong. And then bend the elbows, engage shoulders, pull it back. Full locust. See if you can lift just like an inch higher. You've got it. Big breath and lower. Bend the knees, take the legs side to side. Good work, you guys. Press your hands into the mat, upward facing dog. Hero pose, onto the knees. Great opportunity for water. And close the eyes, check in with the breathing. We take the head around for a couple sets of head rolls. This is a chance to soften, to release. Take the head the other direction. roll the shoulders forward. We are officially in our back bending section today, so really be tuned into what's going on in the spine right now. Roll the shoulders the other way. And in between each of our back bends, it's really important to stabilize the spine by making the spine straight. So we're going to do a camel. When we get done with our camel, I want you guys to come right back here. Okay, so for your camel, you can come right up and stay right here with a straight spine, or you may tuck the toes, pressing them into the mat, bring the elbows behind, Lifting the chest, lifting the gaze, and then bending through that spine as you look back, trying to see the back of the patio. Good, keep those glutes engaged. Hips stay stacked over knees. Drive the feet and the knees into your mat. Lift more. Beautiful, hero. Take all the time you need coming out of this. Stabilize that spine, get it nice and straight. Vertebrae stacking on top of vertebrae. Beautiful. So good, I wanna see another one. So, catch your breath. Set yourself up. This time, try to deepen somewhere. So either reaching hands towards heels, or see if you can get a little bit more rounding through the spine. Make sure you're keeping the hips over the knees the whole time. So engage those glutes, and then go to your back bend. Remember that breath. If you're having a hard time with the breath, take the tongue to the roof of the mouth. Beautiful. Yeah, there it is, guys. All right, all the way up. And down into hero. You can close the eyes. If you want to take another set of head rolls, that felt good for you. All right, we're going to set up on our backs, setting up for bridge pose. Not lifting up just yet. Just get on your backs with your knees bent, your feet into the mat. Knees straight up towards the ceiling and somewhat close together, like about hip width distance. Arms are by your sides, palms down into the earth. Feel that spine connect with the mat. Feel the spine long. Perfect. And now send the hips into the air, bridge pose. Send the feet into the mat. Interlace fingertips under your seat, driving the outsides of your pinkies into the mat. Try to bring the shoulders closer together. Good, lower down. Or if I had it in between your feet, it wouldn't move even when you lift up. 
All right, you guys look ready. So set yourself up. Start by coming into bridge and then lift into your wheel. So it's really important to come in and out slowly. Go ahead and lift, give it everything that you've got. This is our final back bend, your final push of the class. One more breath, seal those feet down, and then lower, nice and slow. Beautiful work, guys. Lift the feet up over the head. We've got to stabilize that spine even more by working our core. Hands go behind the head, pulse the chest up towards the toes for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bend your knees, keep the feet flexed. Opposite knee to elbow, very slow and controlled. For bicycles going 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy baby. Rocking our weight into hip openers. Try to seal your tailbone down on the ground. So press your hands to your feet and your feet to your hands. From the back of your head all the way down to your tailbone, connecting with the earth. Check in with your breathing.
pigeon. Lifting the chest, lifting the gaze. Double pigeon. Opposite leg coming on top this time. Checking in. <laughs> nice straight spines. Option to shut the eyes down just to connect deeper to the breathing. back up. You're going to bring your right hand behind you. Fingertips pointing away from the body. You're going to come onto your right knee. Send the hips up. Maybe go for a gentle back bend if that feels good for you. Slowly come back down. Both sitting bones meeting the mat. Left hand is going to come behind you. Right hand is going to come up. You're going to plant your right foot on the mat and send the hips back up. Coming onto your right toes and the outside of your left foot. Beautiful, nice and slow coming down. That's something new for some of us. Yeah. And then we're gonna switch and do that all on the other side. So, left foot comes into the right leg. Take your time getting there, getting sitting bones rounded. Reach both arms up, face the right leg and fold. Left hand comes behind you. We're coming onto that left knee, sitting the hips up. Choose how, how bendy you want to be. How much of a back bend do you want to make this? And then back onto the seat, switching the hands, planting left foot, coming onto the side, the outside of your right foot, and then onto your left toes. Almost like we're going into wild thing. Beautiful, guys. Much better on this side. Come on down. And then straighten the legs. So now you can turn back to the front so that you can utilize the fullness of your mat. Reground those sitting bones down. So I'll do this little side to side motion to really feel grounded. Straight spines as you reach up, look up. Keep the spine straight as you hinge at your hips. Lifting through the back, getting that release on the lower back, shining the chest to the heart forward as you look towards your flexed feet. Good. If it feels good to deepen, you can bend the knees and just let your forehead hang towards the knees. Lift all the way up. Arms are going to come behind you. Fingertips point in the body. Point the toes this time. Incline plane. Lift the hips. Send the gaze up towards the ceiling. Good. Get long from toe to chin. And lower down. Straight spine for a moment, and then you're going to lay all the way down on your backs. Bring the right knee in to the chest. Roll the foot around. Roll it the other way. Extend the leg up towards the sky. 
pointing the toes. Bend the knee, flex the foot. Straighten and point. And extend out to your right side, maybe grabbing onto the right ankle. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Open up, bend the knee again, bring it back to the chest. You're going to pull that knee all the way to your left side. Use your left hand for that, trying to get it down onto the ground. And then the right arm is going to extend out the right side. You're going to look over your right hand. Supine twist. Another nice opportunity to meet your neighbor, to get friendly with your partner. Deepen the breathing. Nice and slow, coming back through center. Hips squaring, straightening that right leg down to the earth. Taking a moment in stillness, just to check in with that right hip, that right side, what's going on over there after those stretches. And then pull the left knee into the chest, grabbing onto the chin, and roll the foot in one direction. And then the other direction. Straighten the leg. Pointing toes towards the ceiling. Flex the foot, bend the knee. Straight point. Open to the left. Right knee back to chest. Grab onto with the right hand, pull it to the right. Extend left arm out, so I twist.
check in with, with what's going on for you mentally. Maybe you're very aware of all the sounds, the smells, everything that's happening around you. Become aware of your breath without judging it. Just notice how the inhale makes you feel, how that release of breath makes you feel. And then deepen the breath. And as you deepen the breath, begin to bring awareness to the body. Wiggling toes, fingers. Just being aware of how the muscles feel after your practice tonight. Ready, you can bring the knees towards the chest or gently rock side to side. There is no rush to come out of this moment. It's not a race to get back to life. Whenever you're ready, you can come up to a seat, feeling those sitting bones connecting with the earth, keeping the eyes closed in this moment of peace, holding space for each other after our practice together. We're gonna breathe in and reach our arms up overhead. Breathe out and bend to one side. Inhale up to the center, reaching. Exhale over to the other side. Inhale, center. Exhale, we'll take a twist to one side. Take the opposite hand to me, looking over that shoulder, holding for a breath. back all the way up to the center and gently twist the other side. Back to center, reaching high one last time and then pulling your hands to your heart. Drop your right ear to your right shoulder. Drop your head back. Left ear to left shoulder and then chin to chest. All together, breath in through the nose, and a sigh of an exhale, let it all go. Thank yourself for being here in this moment. Right now I wanna thank you, I wanna acknowledge you. My soul sees your soul and honors and respects each and every single one of you. Together we'll close our class by saying, Namaste. challenge we get to work on that meditation piece where we're like oh how can we tune things out so thank you guys so much for being here for being a part of this i hope that y'all enjoy the rest